Right, so I just got this multi-function tester TC1. Bought off Amazon. It was not very expensive. It's pretty cool. Uh, you can put in pretty much any component, clamp it down, doesn't matter what pins you put it in, hit start, and it will test it and give you some information about it. So for voltage, 1.89 essence, 4 picofarad, just on this little LED it came with. The issue I was having with it was that out of the box, it was not accurate. Everything was coming out about 20% lower than it should, especially the uh, small capacitors I'm testing. Uh, so to calibrate it, the procedure is you comes with this bent piece of metal. It doesn't fit in correctly, but you bend it some more, shove it in, clamp it down, press start, and it'll go into self-test mode. And it'll slowly progress, and then it'll eventually get to 22%, where it'll say to isolate the probe, pop that out, and it continues. Uh, so the problem, though, was the first several times I did this, it was still coming out low. I didn't, it was coming out almost exactly the same. I didn't know if it was calibrating or what. At this point, after having run this about 30, 40 times in a row, it's become a lot more accurate. Um, but I noticed one problem with the calibration is that if you notice on this uh, piece they give you, it's a bunch of just bent metal into pins, a lot of parallel running, overlapping tracks of metal. And at this point, the accuracy might just be that this piece itself is getting broken in, or maybe it's an iterative process where the more times you run it, it gets better and better. Because now it's, now it's pretty close, even when I use this for calibration, which I recommend you do not do. Uh, something that immediately worked better for me was it came with these little probes. So shove those in pins one, two, three. So clamps, and then I just clamped them all together to bridge them. And then I ran it that way. Uh, that's not the only way to do it. Uh, I also tried jumping the pins with two little pieces of wire and that immediately improved the accuracy. Uh, the, the simpler, the simpler, less capacitance in the calibration tool you have, the more accurate it seems like it's going to be. Uh, so, so my recommendation is to ditch this, or in the very least fill in these legs with solder or something to, to get down that capacitance, uh, because that's been really throwing off the results. The, the simpler of a, of a little three-legged wire you can use to jump all of those, the better. Uh, so now that it's self-tested, we're going to try this WEMA 2.2 microfarad capacitor. This is plus or minus 10%. Hit start. And it's at 23.46 nanofarad. So when I first started off, it was closer to 1800 nanofarad. It was just way off. We had a spec and it wasn't matching up with my other means of testing these capacitors. So when I put this into this multimeter, for example, 2.354, so not, not that far off. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty cool, but my recommendation is definitely uh, get rid of this stupid little jumper make something better, or just use the probes it came with, which are more accurate. Um, uh, I, I mean, th these aren't perfect, but if you're going to be using these to measure uh, bigger devices, and you're actually going to be using it with these probes, then definitely calibrate it with these probes. If you're going to be using it with this little ZIF, then, you know, just put some very small simple, round, non-bent, non-overlapping, decent jumpers in between there. And it, it should really help everything just come out closer to what it should be. Closer to zero resistance and zero capacitance, the, the better.